So on my turbo E46, stock fuel pump has nowhere near enough um, capacity. So I've been running a Walbro 450 for a couple of years now. And that thing's been sweet, um, but with the new standalone one on the car, we wanted to make sure we can make as much power as possible. And we were trying to keep it simple, so we didn't want to run a multi-pump system. And the Walbro can support a ton of horsepower, but because we're on 85, we need a lot of supply. So we heard about this new pump, the Doucheworks, the Doucheworks, I don't really know, it's a weird word, so I just call it Doucheworks because it's weird also. Um, it's a 400. What do Doucheworks is the actual name of it? Doucheworks. Douch. 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 Douch inside? Douch. 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 Douchworks. Douchworks. They just want to fuel your passion for performance. That's all they want to do. Anyway, it makes some dope pumps. This is the new one. The DW is a 400. Yeah. Yeah, this is a 400, and basically at high pressures with like EFI, you know, it'll outflow the Walbro at the top end. We're making a ton of boost by a decent margin. So, so it's like, what, 31%, I think? Yeah, 31% more than the Walbro between 70 and 100 PSI. You know, I don't really know how that figure is calculated between a PSI, but the chart it clearly shows the Walbro kind of falling off and the Dutch works continuing to go on. I think part of that is the Walbro has a relief valve, a certain amount of pressure. This doesn't. So when you're using a pump like this, you need to check if you have a, a check valve in your system. So the Walbro has a check valve, so once you shut the car off, the fuel shouldn't like really pour back in. You know, you lose pressure after a couple minutes, but um, what you want to do when you're using something like that is get a one-way valve. This is a check valve from Sun Racing, 6 a.m. We're just going to use this connector to connect it to my, my fuel filter, which is a K&N 10 micron. We're just going to put it on there underneath the car. Um, you don't have to worry about this ever again, just going to that out of, this, out of the party, but uh, when you're going to this pump, always remember it does have a check valve, so you might want to add one because it helps with cold starts and stuff like that. And here's our mascot. And, and there goes the mascot. There goes. All right. <laughs> so, oh, use that. All right. So we have the pump right. Then we have a bulkhead fitting, and if we, what we use the bulkhead fitting for is the holes for the stock fuel pump are like tiny, tiny nipples. The holes are tiny, and it makes like a 90 degree turn. It's just terrible for flow. So what we want to do is run the, because we run 6 a.m. and this exit is 3 8 which is essentially 6 a.m., we want to run a full 6 a.m. all throughout the system. And on our, my current setup, I have a bulkhead fitting with 5 16 because the wall rows are 5 16 bar, I believe. So instead of even restricting a tiniest bit, we're going to go to this larger bulkhead, which is going to be more annoying to install, but hopefully worth it in the long run. All right, so that's that. And this is just an adapter for the bulkhead fitting. Give you guys a close in a moment. And what this is, is a like bulkhead ceiling thing from ATF fuel tanks, I think I believe it was what it is. So the Drug Enforcement Agency also makes fuel tanks. <laughs> um, but what this does is you put it in there and it, because the wires coming through the stock um, like connector can't handle the amount of amps putting this amp, this uh, fuel pump needs. So what we do is we wire the pump to directly to the battery on a relay from the wires there. So when those wires get hot from the ECU, on the stock wiring harness, we get power directly from the battery on big, thick, like 12 gauge wires. And why we do that is because these pumps take a lot of juice, way more of our stock. I mean, the demands are probably tenfold, whatever, it's a lot. So this is a way to seal it. Um, in the past, we've done like epoxy, and stuff like that, but this is kind of a more professional way to do it that won't break down and then light your car on fire. So after we spent all this time, we're trying not to have our car light on fire. So, you know, the wires kind of poke through. So now, give me a little close up right now. I'll go what we got going on. This is like an aftermarket one I found on eBay. The hanger is actually a little bit different than the factory, so this is definitely like a uh, aftermarket kind of fix it kit. Um, but it doesn't really matter because we're going to tear most of it up anyway. So, this is the pump. We're going to take all this noodles out. Basically, all I need is all I need it for is the fuel level assembly. This is the bulkhead fitting for the fuel line adapter. I always recommend getting this up for summer racing, it's best deal. This is the 6A and check valve. It's pretty simple. It goes that way, it doesn't go back. This is the ATF seal. So basically you tighten it down and it creates a seal in your kind of thing with Bob there. So we're gonna put this like, you know, somewhere like right there or right there, or just something. We're gonna figure that out, don't worry about that. This is the DW400, see it's got a big mama hole. It's got some nice looking stuff. I don't, yeah, it's a fuel pump, okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're gonna get started tearing this apart. So we'll, get, we'll move the camera, set it up, and we'll go from there. So the best way to start with these fuel pumps 
is to pop out these little rubber things. Well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna kind of plug it so it doesn't so it doesn't feel bad, so it doesn't break. You got the other side. Okay, so there's three of them all the way around. If you're watching this for a car other than a non-ME46, it's probably a similar setup in your car. You just gotta kind of poke these, get them pop out. Okay, awesome. So now what you're gonna do, get that pump out of there. Oh wow, that was very well attached. All right, so now that we got this there, I'm gonna get some snippers. We're gonna cut the wires. So we don't need those suckers anymore. Okay, I'm gonna cut through. I'm gonna get something a little bit better. Where's my knife? That thing will cut right through. Ding, ding, ding. Don't run the knives! Ding, 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 And he's back. All right, so that fuel pump's poop. No, I don't think so. I gotta get the. <laughs> All right, yeah, so basically the first thing you gotta do is uh all right so if our prayers are answered lord baby jesus it's not the same diameter it's kind of close though it might be able to jam it in there we're not gonna be able to jam it in there so what we're gonna have to do is slice this so that it can accept it we'll just and then we'll just clamp it in there. And as you can see, it's a bit taller Some also. Zip ties. Yeah, just lots. This stuff, you're never gonna see it, so just make it work, you know? So I'm gonna go get the Dremel, and we're gonna slice this puppy up. Yeah, so what we're gonna do, essentially cut, I bet right here is good, yeah? Yeah. Now that we got some ability to get some room made. Maybe let's break this one. Ooh, good idea. Chris is an engineer. So because this is there, it's kind of giving it strength. So we're going to make it less strong. We're going to break this wheel. How's that look? It looks kind of nice. With a metal zip tie? Yeah, that's not oh, yeah. going anywhere. All right. Yeah. so. And that's, we don't need that. I think we're going to cut out these grooves because it's interfering with that thing too. So let's cut that out. We're going to do just the, the sand. Just don't worry. We'll probably clean this off well before we put it in the fuel tank. Probably. 50-50 chance. If we remember. So I ordered some Earl's fuel line and Continental came. Cotton, some random Continental fuel line came. So I don't know what you're trying to pull on me, Earl's. But this this ain't no fancy fuel line. But anyway, throw it. The issue is this is so long it's interfering with a lot of our shit. So imagine, imagine that that's this is where the fuel pump is. Yeah, this plastic part. Yeah. So yeah, we're gonna have no choice. We're gonna have to do the loop. -de -loop. What if we go right here? You run like, you like the half inch. And I cut the fucking same like, thing we did with mine. Yeah, what, what we might do, what we might, might do is we cut a couple barbs off this one. We cut a couple barbs off the pump, and in turn, we get a more clearance. Um. All right. So yeah, pretty much we just took some length out of the fittings. We all really all you have to make sure is you can get a hose clamp on this. Just whatever size hose clamp you think you're gonna use. Just test fit it. Make sure you get enough thickness. Do both sides is essentially just making the connections. We're saving ourselves an inch. But again, we're playing with millimeters right now to try to fit this, so any length helps. All right, so now we're kind of going to test fit these together. We'll slide this back in the pump, and we'll see where we stand. What we did here is Dremel. We made the hole, and we Dremeled the surface around it flat. See how it had a ridge? I'm going to point to that ridge. Yeah, that ridge went all the way across. So we flattened that puppy out and took some of that connector off to give us some more room for a washer. The washers are going to have to be uh, edited. <laughs> but 
But uh, we're gonna make it work. So we're gonna go fit it up together and show you guys what happens. Let's see if Mike can undo the Loctite this time, or if the Loctite is too tight. Loctite usually hides from it. Doesn't want to be used. Can JB weld it? I mean, that is my second choice always. I mean, even though this is pretty vibration isolated, you don't want to have this coming off in the middle of your race, so, yeah. Titan, we got some JB Weld, we got the Teflon washer. No JB Weld. Did I say that? Yeah. I'm just so used to using it. <laughs> so we got the JB Weld. Um, no, we don't have the JB Weld. God, I'm like born to use JB Weld. <laughs> All right, so. The blue Loctite. <laughs> so we got the Loctite on there. We're gonna put the, the cut adapter fitting on there. We're gonna snug her up. Um, you wanna? Hold that one just in case while I spin this one. Sure. So make sure it's tight in the seats. You spin it? No, not really. Very okay, cool. That's pretty fucking. All right, show that, not me. Oh yeah. <laughs> Chris is my best audience. <laughs> okay, so. Okay, that's fuck. That's. Working tight on there. So obviously we're gonna have to do a little edit on one side of the connection here, but who cares? All this does is a fuel level. If God forbid we lose fuel level, we'll just take the plate off and pull it back on. I think it's still gonna work. I'm just gonna cut half the bracket off. Um We're gonna try it without cutting the bracket first. Yeah. If we have to, we'll cut the bracket. What Chris said. Alright, so let's uh get the little shrapnels out of here. It used to be lovely in the injectors. Alright, this was left about as good as we left Vietnam, so. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what a shit show. <laughs> so basically, we have the fittings as they should be on the top, Teflon washer on the bottom, which fits perfectly. We have our adapter, and now we're gonna run our fuel pump literally almost touching. We don't wanna to touch, but like we wanna go very close. And that's gonna give us like a hundo P fuel. We got a little bit of room for the filter. This is looking good. This is looking real good. We're gonna snug everything up, put the fuel line on, make a hole for the wires, and I think we're pretty much making the ultimate fuel system on the stock hanger. Yeah, boys! So where should we put the wiring? Wiring can go top level. We can either- Does this have to go to this? No, just go straight through, through with, this, with this buddy. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So they don't made up at all post fuel pump. Like these don't come together. Well, I have a whole harness already in the car. I think we should lop off. Oh my God, I am <laughs> the worst ever. I think we should, late. We should lop these yeah, two off. Agree. Put the hole right there. Bink. All right, so we're gonna go do some more Dremel. Dremel. I'm a I'm an artist with a grinder. All right, so I'm gonna go make some holes. Cut. There you go. So this is like a Teflon bulkhead fitting for these wires. So what you do is you tighten up the bulkhead fitting. That's all tightened up. You take off the cap. That's what helps profession like crunch it down and get sealed. So you're gonna run your wires through. Through the wires or wires through the cat, 
wherever you like to pronounce your English. Okay. Give this a few little How's it feel? Torque tight? You can see it popping out. It's getting, you know, on the high side right there. So she's squeezing down. I'll give it one little boop. It's not going anywhere, let me tell you. And you're nice and sealed. This is like a proper seal. We've done it with like epoxy a few times. E85 eats through everything. So don't make our mistake. Remember, we, we go through the pain. We need to cut this off. What is this? <laughs> what is that one? It's the extra ground for the DW pump. Do we? No. Oh. All right. You don't need it? Nope. So guys, this is the final ultimate fuel pump. I'm going to put the filter on in a second, but regardless, we're going to clean it up, put it in the car. We'll post an update video, but for assembly wise, this is the ultimate fuel pump for the E46. It's DW400. We're going to zip tie it and clamp it. Don't worry about it. We know you guys can do that on your own. DW400, bulkhead fittings, keeping it low so that you're not hitting the body, professionally sealing it. We're going to seal this up with a cap and we're going to drill this out for our tank uh, filler from the other side of the saddle tank. We have another pump that pumps into this side so it keeps it from starving. So basically guys, you're right there. Um, like us, subscribe, check out our website, seemslegitgarage.com. Seems legit We've got all sorts of fun stuff. So uh, EC, whether it's ECUs or um, secondary handbrakes, we got them coming. We got a lot of cool stuff, the E46 platform. We got uh, tablet mounts, all sorts of cool stuff. So if you need, it, if you want to do anything, let us know. We are open to making all sorts of custom parts. So, yeah, hit us up, and we'll see how this works. Okay, one last update. We got the silicone block off there, the little hose end. We got the clamp. This pump isn't going, isn't going anywhere. We got a zip tie there, holding it up and out of the way. This thing's ready to go in the car. You know, this thing's really ready. Can't wait. So thanks for watching. Hit subscribe. Check out our internet uh, our website so uh yeah thanks for watching this is gonna be sweet i hope more people do mods like this